When it comes to disinformation, we definitely see that uh, the amount of disinformation fed into the region is uh, not decreasing. It actually is very, very active and we see the prevalence of this disinformation in some countries more, in some countries less. There are some countries in the region which are really resilient, they are really doing a good job, such as Poland, Czech Republic, and then there are countries uh, based on our research that um, uh, are more vulnerable to Russian disinformation. Well, there are a lot of uh, Russian narratives that are coming through. Um, basically, they are taken over by uh, local actors. And it's about like who is responsible for the war. Uh, at the beginning of the war, there were these disinformation narratives that were completely debunked about the um, biolabs in Ukraine, for example. Also, um, it was interesting that when the invasion started already, the, the receivers of this information were aware of the fact that there are Nazis in Ukraine, that this, was, this is a reason why it has to be helped. So a, a lot of this information about, at the beginning, why this invasion is happening, and this perceives, and uh, then the narratives are changing based on how Russian government is changing them. I think that, um, so directly we did a research in two countries, and that's uh, Romania and Bulgaria. Uh, and the rest of the countries, we don't have the current data now. What we see from our previous research is that due to the media landscape, uh, the um, receivers and information are in much more vulnerable situation because there are a lot of uh, Russian channels still who are freely pumping this disinformation into the media landscape. This is not the case in EU anymore because of the sanctions and Russian and Sputnik were taken down. Although, of course, whoever wants to access these channels can do so over the internet or there are ways how to find access to them. But their activity is slowed down by the fact that uh, they were sanctioned. So I think that uh, the situation is much more complicated in Balkan due to the fact that uh, the Russian media can operate here really successfully. And when it comes to uh, Romania and Bulgaria, it's interesting to see that uh, the situation is worse in Bulgaria based on our data. Basically, uh, the fact that, that there is a much higher buyout to disinformation narratives uh, says that the country itself is much less resilient to the disinformation, which is more, you know, as we discussed today, the event um, due to the combination of factors such as uh, education and the fact that uh, Russia is still perceived as a savior throughout the history and this is how children are taught, but also due to the media landscape and the ownership, etc. For example, Romania, the neighbor, due to the historical events that they faced and experienced, they are much more resilient and they, uh, the, the citizens know where they stand much more, that the orientation is to the West is the right one and so on. I think there are a lot of um, very, very valuable initiatives uh, that uh, recently, um, um, I think that after, uh, for a long time already, this is taken as a really serious issue, like information operations from Russia. However, we have to say that uh, Russia has it in its core, this submersive messaging that it was during the Soviet Union, it was later on. I think that we joined and started to counterfeit much later, but I think that um, European Union is fighting uh, and European institutions are fighting on various fronts. So, for example, the DSA uh, is coming into force this year, which is uh, basically the act that will give um, power to find the um, social, social networks for helping to spread disinformation and hate speech. Of course, like Facebook is not uh, responsible for Russian disinformation, but is responsible for amplifying it, you know? So uh, um, the reason why European institutions are taking this stand is because uh, of the protection of freedom of speech itself. Unfortunately, when you are fighting an enemy which uh, doesn't adhere adhere to human rights and freedoms, it's much more complicated. So much, it's much easier for uh, regimes such as Russia and China to spread this information because they don't have any human rights standards. I was, or you can argue with me, but I would say that uh, just look at how many journalists or how many people are in prison for their opinions. So uh, if you want to respect freedom of opinion and freedom of speech, then you have to be really careful how you are going to curb them because you don't want to go that way. You don't want to 
um, limit it too much, so uh, at the end we will be the same as the enemy. So there are new tools in the European Union which helps to, on one hand, uh, limit infops coming from Russia and disinformation coming from Russia, but it's not uh, equal playing field. So it's very challenging because of that.